What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steven Ostentoski here of MGO Fish, bringing you episode three of Recruit Review for the class of 2020. Today, we're covering four-star cornerback out of Bellevue, Michigan, Andre Selden. Thanks to those who participated in the YouTube poll, you can find the poll for episode four right up here at this little icon. Leave a comment below if you don't see someone in that poll that you really do want to see, and I'll take all of that into consideration. Without further ado, let's cover Andre Selden here. As I mentioned, Andre Selden went to Bellevue High School. They're one of the top programs in Michigan, Division I. They made the semis the past two years under their head coach, Jermaine Crowell. Jermaine Crowell, if that name sounds familiar, he was a former assistant at Cass Tech High School. Let's look at his rankings up here as well. Uh, Rivals ESPN 247, they all have him in the four-star range. Rivals and ESPN have him closer to 150th in the country. 247 has him a little lower in the 300 range. I'll have him from anywhere from 13th cornerback in the nation up to 22nd for 247. And they're all he's top 10 in all services within the state of Michigan, as high as number two for rivals. He did go to a lot of camps that were rivals specific, so that could be an indicator of why he's a little bit higher. Um, but again, he's a four-star for all services. He's listed around 5'8", 5'9", uh, 150 to 160 pounds. I'll throw his testing numbers up here as well. Uh, 40 time is 4.50. If you take the cornerbacks from the 2020 NFL draft class, that's right around middle of the pack. For that same group, his shuttle time of 4.22 is pretty good. That would be seventh overall for cornerbacks for the 2020 class. And his vertical is very good at 38.1. That would get him fifth in a corner cornerbacks overall in the 2020 draft. So very good vertical. Shuttle is pretty decent. Top speed isn't great with his 40, but still uh, plenty to make it work at a power five level. All right, let's look at his stats real quick. He was deployed as a safety and punt returner. He played on offense a little bit as wide receiver as well. I'll throw up the stats on the screen now. I won't talk to these stats. They're, they're you know kind of hard to judge for defensive back. How good were the teams throwing at him? How good were the quarterback? Were they avoiding him? So he has decent stats here. They're to be taken with a grain of salt. Looking at his offers, he committed really early to Michigan, so his offers were primarily Mac schools. He did his first offer was from Kentucky. He had offers from Maryland, Syracuse, and Iowa State as well. But uh, it's one of these situations where he likely could have reported offers from other schools, but he wasn't interested as Michigan was his destination, and he knew so very early. His recruitment, like I said, was pretty pretty low key. Kentucky offered first in 2016, which is pretty crazy. That was was his summer after his freshman year so a very early offer he had some unofficial visits uh, as he was picking up more offers he, had, he hit the camp scene quite a bit as i mentioned he committed to u of m in june of 2018 he did unofficially visit penn state in the fall of 2019 but he stuck with his commitment and he's an early enrollee so i'll get right into his film here and, and i'll talk about scouting a little bit as i'm showing more film um, but he does insanely well at camps he did a lot of them he he beat out julian barnett at a 2018 Rivals camp in Chicago. Julian Barnett, if that name sounds familiar, Bellevue recruit four-star who's now at Michigan State. He was uh, used quite a quite a bit uh, his freshman year, so good company. All the scouting you'll see on him really, really talk to his ability to stay on the hip pocket of wide receivers on nearly every, every route. So he has ability to press at the line, but he has really great instincts and ball skills to play off the line as well. So he isn't strictly a man-to-man -man guy. He was deployed at safety, so that helped hone in those skills. Very polished, technically highly competitive. He hits very well. He's a very physical in nature cornerback, despite the small size. Jermaine Crowell, his head coach, says that he's one of the twitchiest kids that he's ever coached. So this is the same guy who coached, you know, a number of high level defensive backs out of Cast Tech while Crowell was an assistant there. Alan True of 247 um, notes his excellent makeup speed, uh, really good instincts, as I said, good ball skills and hands, and an excellent vertical, as we saw the numbers earlier. Pac Man Jones, um, which is, you know, the quintessential short guy defensive back, called him very coachable, a good kid that he reminded him of himself. So, let's hope, right? Um, willing to compete on every play. Pac-Man Jones called him very smart, one of the smartest guys that they had there. And when I say there, it's the Under Armour All-American game where both he and Deion Sanders were coaches of one of the two teams. I'll actually show a clip here of some of this praise during, during one of the practices. So 
So obviously that's really high praise. That's really good to see. So there's a couple of clips here and a couple of specific areas that I really want to cover in his film. So let's get to that. So this first area is technique and press situations. He covers hitches and comeback routes extremely well, matching their routes stride for stride. He works his way in front of wide receivers when the ball is coming and his eyes shift once the route is committed. So he recognizes when the ball is coming and shifts his eyes at the perfect time to identify where the ball is and then getting the interception. So great instincts in reading wide receivers and jumping routes when he has to. And good ball skills as well. Great use of his hands. He, he can get a little bit physical, so may have to tone it down. This last clip, though, is so, so good. I want to slow this down. So excellent use of the hands here after he recognizes the double move, gets on his horse, gets on max speed here, uses his arm to identify the wide receiver as he's running stride for stride. Ball is overthrown, but he's right there. So that's really excellent to identify this route and then go stride for stride with the wide receiver. But he's also really good in off ball situations. So his eyes and instincts really lend himself well to this as well. So he reads the QB's eyes extremely well, even when he's not in a man to man situation. Um, he fades off the coverage that he's on to get to the ball and he really becomes the wide receiver in those situations. So, uh, you know, that's just a really valuable asset to have, you know, if he's not in a man to man situation, he can still hack in. And I think him playing safety really lends itself to that skill set. So this next film here is mainly a reflection of the skills I displayed from his camp film, but this is an actual game. So he shadowing receivers here, he has really good makeup speed. Um, on the wheel route, you saw it in the lap last clip, but, uh, but he also has really good timing. So when the ball's in the air, he can, you know, he identifies what's the best time to go up and challenge the pass, which is obviously very valuable. And that's tied to all the other things I mentioned here. He also has the physicality to come up and lay a hit on someone at the perfect time. So this last clip, you'll see him kind of fade off the coverage a little bit. The ball is thrown into his area and just lays the guy out. So this next section here will show that as well, that his hitting ability is really, I think, a thing that sets him apart from other cornerbacks. Um, so, you know, in those off ball situations, maybe it's running back coming out of the backfield or, or, you know, he's in his zone. As soon as the, the play is committed and he sees where the ball is going, he hits well and he often shows good technique. Sometimes he can go a little bit high in, in this clip you'll see, but not all the time. And, and more often than not, he's, he's laying a good hit with a nice wrap up tackle. And they used him in blitz situations too. So I really like the idea of having him come off on a corner blitz. He shows here that he's able to get there and, and use the skill set, his quick agility to get into the backfield and cause a fumble here. So they also weren't afraid to deploy him on offense. You can see this first clip here. He's using that physical nature as a blocker. I also hate that this was called a penalty, but it is a crackback block. But they also used him you know, as a route runner. You can see there in that camp setting, he's a guy who can use that agility on offense as well and probably is what partially makes him so valuable as a defender is, is that quickness to uh, run routes like that as well. Um, you know, Bellevue used him as, you know, a deep threat with his speed uh, and also as a punt returner. You know, he had quite a few punt returns for touchdowns. Um, decent vision. I wouldn't say, you know, it's it, it's the best. And I think it's still why, um, you know, it's always good that you can get a guy with that playmaking ability. So he should be able to step in and be a contributor there if needed. Okay, let's look at a couple negatives here. Given his physicality, he can get caught a little bit for being too physical. You see here he grabs a little bit and then gets beat high over the top. Nothing you can really do there, you know, with a well-thrown ball like this one as well. Sometimes you just get got, right? So that's something where his size, you know, is something that can come into play with more well-thrown balls from collegiate uh, quarterbacks. You could see that happen more often. Um, so that's just something to consider. And then sometimes you just get beat, you know, with how many camps that he went to, um, you know, there are a couple times he slipped, sometimes that fell down or just get beat on routes and that it happens to everyone. So I didn't see it too often. The vast majority were positives. So that's good when he's going up against the best of the best. It, it isn't something that I saw a whole lot. I, I'm not one to hide the negatives from here. And then finally, cat and mouse game. This is one area where I think he could really improve his feet. He, he needs to keep his feet moving in these situations where he'll stay planted and he gets beat here. These are, these are three three clips and this is something that um, I think other uh, cornerbacks performed a little bit better than he did so something that can be improved upon for comparison I'm going to throw out a Meek Robertson someone I wasn't really aware of but he just got drafted uh, to the Raiders in the fourth round he's out of Louisiana Tech 
Uh, he was a gen- generic three star out of Louisiana, right around a thousand, I think nine hundred or a thousand overall in the class of twenty seventeen. But he's five eight and a half, one eighty five. He ran a four point four five forty, decent vertical. But really, things are are the the scouting of his uh, skill set and his film here. Uh, praised for his competitiveness, his physicality, ball skills, and instincts. Um, I'll give a link in the description below for his entire draft profile. It sounds eerily similar to Andre Selden here. His recruitment, you know, being that low, he was committed to Louisiana Tech, decommitted, took some visits to LSU, Houston, Texas, had offers from all three of those programs, as well as from Arizona and Cincinnati. So having that LSU offer, a Texas offer, you know, that's a pretty good offer list for a generic three-star there. Despite being under-recruited versus Selden, uh, extremely productive all three years that he played at Louisiana Tech starting his true freshman year. Similar build profile and likely ceiling, looking at mid-rounds in the NFL draft. Um, So you could very well see that for Selden as well. So for projection, I would love to see Selden at least get some spot duty in year one. I think he's talented enough to hack it. His technique especially lends itself well and his intelligence, plus the fact that he's an early enrollee, you know, lots of things line up for him to see sometime as a true freshman. The depth chart really lends itself well for him to contribute. You have Ambry Thomas as a clear number one, Vincent Gray, who got some time last year, he'll be a clear number two, but Andre Selden could be the guy you deploy in nickel situation, follow the... KJ Hamlers or the JK Dobbins around in routes. That's a guy that you can really use and Michigan fans know that well. So I could see him deployed in that situation. I want to see him get plenty of cornerback duty because after next year, Thomas will be gone. Anseld may be the best in the room in terms of athleticism. Right now we have DJ Turner, g Green, Jalen Perry, George Johnson. So none of those guys are really you know high level of athletes coming in. So he can make up ground really quickly on them given his skill set. So that's all I have for you guys. I'm really, really excited here for Andre Selden. I know I've said that about all these recruits, but that's why I'm covering them first because I'm very excited about the skill sets they bring. Again, let me know in the comments below who you want to see for episode four. Participate in the poll up on this side again. Uh, follow me at Twitter, at Steven Toski. And beyond that, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. As always, stay safe out there and go blue.